Hi, I'm Dave Hillowitz. So today I was thinking uh, it might be fun to try to build a synthesizer, not like a contact instrument, uh, a physical synthesizer. Um, uh, basically, I want to have some kind of a sound source that I can uh, record and sample and bring into contact, but I want the sound source to be analog. There's all this, you know, talk on forums all the time about how analog is, you know, much fatter, much better sounding. I don't know if I've ever really completely bought into that, but anyway, I thought it would be a fun project. Uh, when I was 13, I had this um, really uh, intense electronics phase that uh, involved me like looking up schematics and building tons and tons of circuits, but I never actually understood how the circuits work. And to this day, I still don't. For some reason, digital stuff and programming always clicked a lot more than hardware stuff. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Okay, so the schematic I picked is this one. Uh, and the reason I picked this isn't because I know anything about this circuit or because I understand the circuit. I really don't understand electronic circuits. Uh, the reason I picked it is because it has a diagram of what the breadboard uh, is supposed to look like. So typically when you get an electronic circuit, you're given just this, a schematic. And I know how to read the schematic, but translating that into an actual working circuit is actually not so easy. Things are not laid out on a breadboard the same way that they're laid out on a schematic. And doing that mapping is something that's never come easily. So uh, I am that lazy. I'm actually picking this based on uh, the presence of that breadboard diagram. Okay, let's build this thing. So basically all I'm doing here is I'm putting the components in place. At the center of the circuit is a 555 timer. This is a small, very cheap integrated circuit that's at the heart of a huge number of beginner electronics projects. It basically allows you to generate a pulse, which makes it perfect for building an oscillator like this one. Other than that, this circuit has a resistor, two capacitors, and a variable resistor to control the pitch. Next, I'm just gonna make my way around the breadboard, connecting everything with these pretty colored wires. If it looks like I'm doing this quickly, it's because I've messed with the speed of the footage to make this video less boring. This part of the video is only a minute long, but it actually took me 14 minutes to build this circuit. Okay, I think we're done. Uh, let's hear what this sounds like. I plug my nine volt battery in and... Okay, so I've got my uh, sound samples that I've recorded from my oscillator. Uh, I've got six regions. Uh, basically, all I did is I twiddled the knob, waited for it to get a little bit stable, and then uh, recorded, and I did that six times. So uh, let's take a listen. I'm gonna open them up in RX-6, and we can take a look at the spectrums. Uh, okay, this one. Okay, I can already see that this one's gonna be pretty much useless. Okay, that's, yeah. I definitely think I screwed up something with this circuit because I think it's supposed to be either a square wave or a saw wave, and that is neither. Okay, that's getting closer. Let's uh, let's look at the waveform. I'm gonna zoom in a ton. Okay, we can see here this is not either you know a saw wave or a square wave. It's something else. Um, it is periodic. Uh, it's usable as a synth, but uh, yeah. Okay, so that's one. Region six. Uh, oh, okay, that's also. All of the really high pitch ones for some reason are really stable and all of the low pitch ones are really, really unstable. So probably we're gonna use this one. We're gonna use uh, the previous one. Okay, still kind of usable. Oh, it's gonna be awful. Okay, so uh, that was, for some reason these have loaded out of order. One, five, and six are the ones we want to use. And that's really all I wanted to do. I just wanted to kind of figure out which of these um, um, six samples I actually want to use as part of this contact instrument. Okay, let's load up contact. I'm gonna make three groups. Open up the mapping editor, and what did we say? One, five, and six. So I'm going to label this region 01, 
region five, region six. I'm doing this only for my own benefit because I probably won't be able to keep track of this. Uh, okay, I'm gonna pull in that first region, spread it across everything. Okay, I'm already doing this to the wrong group. Try that again. Pull in region one and pull in region five to the region five group. Switch to the region six group, pull in region six. And now if I play note, it's gonna sound awful because I haven't tuned anything. Not even awful, <laughs> it seems to have set the root note on all of them to uh, C minus two. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually set it to C3 for all of them. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go back into RX6 and I'm gonna look at these uh, and try to kind of select that first frequency, the lowest frequency, the fundamental. Uh, okay, and down here, while I'm doing that, you can see we've got, a, it's about 850. Actually gives me the low and the high of my selection. It's about 850 Hertz. So I actually have a lookup table that I use for all of my instruments, 850 Hertz or whatever's closest. And I usually choose the note below. So I'm gonna go with G sharp four, uh, which is note number 80. I'll type that in. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with region five. I'm gonna pull up region five. I'm gonna look here and that's about 1100 Hertz. We're gonna go here and that's note 85. And I'm going to do the same thing with region 6, which is about 1900 hertz, very high up. Go back to my lookup table, 1900 hertz, yeah, 94. It's going to be a little more than 94, so here we go. That's actually sharp. Okay, so we've got three waveforms layered on top of each other. Uh, one thing I haven't done yet is I haven't actually set their loop regions. So I'm gonna open up the wave editor and go down here and turn on that first loop and zoom in a ton. And we could do this by hand almost. It's pretty close. And I'm gonna do some crossfading just for fun. Move to the next one, do the same thing. You can see it's not a completely even loop. You've got these big modulations happening towards the end and they're much tighter up here, it's interesting. Okay, we're going to do this by hand. And definitely we want some crossfade on this. Okay, and then finally... And we're going to back out a little bit and I'm going to make sure that the... the loop region is somewhere in the middle. And I'm going to do find loop end long, and now we're just going to inspect. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to turn up the crossfade a little bit. Let's hear that. Okay, um, so that has a lot of high end. I think what I want to do is put a low pass filter on all three groups. Uh, and I'm just going to choose the first one, the first four pole low, low pass filter. Uh, let's. up a bit. It's actually kind of cool, sort of like a vintage string machine kind of sound. To give it more of that stereo effect, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these regions and maybe pan them a little bit. Um, so first I want to make sure I'm not editing all groups. Uh, I'm going to Grab the first one, maybe pan it a little bit to the left. 
and the middle one I'll keep in the center and the right one I will pan like an equal amount to the right. Okay, since it's kind of a pad, I think that it should have longer release time. So I'm going to turn that up to like maybe 1200 or something. It's cool sounding, but if I turn up the cutoff too much, it sounds kind of nasal. It sounds kind of whiny. Uh, let's try adding some chorus. Sometimes that's all you need. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Pretty cool. Uh, so even though I screwed up making the actual oscillator circuit, we still managed to use the results of the oscillator um, to make a very cool uh, sampled instrument with contact. I'm going to put a link to the instrument in the description to this YouTube video, just as I always do. Uh, if you've been enjoying these videos, remember to hit like or subscribe or both, some combination. Um, yeah, this has been kind of fun adventure. Um, take care.